We will occupy the White House as Americans anxiously await final results. And in Lagos, Nigeria, investigations into the Lekki shootings thickens. But this time, with a new twist as Lekki concession company LCC submits camera footage but says cameras stopped working at 8 p.m. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladengi. Welcome, this is Plus Politics. The last 24 hours in the United States of America has been tensed for voters. The 45th President of the United States, President Donald Trump, and his Democratic Party opponent Joe Biden are not left out in the tension. Millions of legally cast votes are being counted in elections offices around the country as the presidential race comes down to a handful of battleground states. Biden holds the lead in the Electoral College at this stage and the night, that is uh, 238 to 213, that's needing 270 the electoral votes. 270 electoral votes are needed to become president. All eyes are on the count in key states of Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Georgia, and North Carolina to decide the race for the White House. Why Biden says he believes he is on track to win, Trump has claimed victory prematurely and has continued to claim ballots counted after election day signal malfeasance. Joining me to discuss this and to dissect it uh, thoroughly, we have joining us all the way from Maryland, United States, Okechiku Joseph, a Nollywood actor popularly known as King Joe. Good evening. Good evening, Okechuku Joseph. Ah, yes, I can understand that the audio will be fixed anytime soon. And we have here, here in our legal studio, Adini Ikunu, who is a foreign affairs analyst. Good evening. I think it's okay to say good evening here because over there is still good afternoon. <laughs> yes, uh, immediately o'clock, six o'clock. Uh, now they go to 12, so on the average, it's six hours difference. And Nigeria is ahead, so that's the way it is. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, let me start with you, then I'll move over to uh, King Joe over there. Now, um, there seems to be a kind of halt, um, which we don't understand. Yeah. Uh, I'm fully aware that uh, I actually monitored the election four years ago. Okay. I think we didn't have this kind of delay in terms of uh, the result trickling in, and we were able to achieve the 270, and by now we knew what the president of America was going to be. Yeah. And but this time around, what is wrong? Well, I can say nothing is wrong. It's just that we have a lot of million voters, uh, over 100 million, so far out of uh, about 328.2 uh, million eligible voters. And um, according to what um, we have, I think some of the counts uh, of those votes that are coming in late might go into as far as the, the end of this new week that we have. Um, or maybe even early next week, and that's a concern. I don't also forget that there had been moves by the incumbent, President Donald Trump, to prevent counting of those votes beyond the day he deems ideal because he feels it's going to give unfair advantage. And that's another thing. Um, you know, one of the things I found reasonable in Trump's position for me is that at times when you delay bringing in of votes, even in any election situation, uh, you could expose people to what they shouldn't get, which has to do with fraud. It therefore means that we cannot just jettison his concerns or the fears he has that some of those votes could be tampered with. But that being said, there is always a legal system through which you go and uh, to find results. Don't forget that uh, there had been lead declaration that he won the election. Uh, Joe Biden said he's going to wait and see things through. But what's important is for the United States of America 
to actually you know, show that as the bastion of democracy, um, that is what it is touted to be. But I have to tell you that the U.S. Uh, occupies 45th position in terms of press freedom across mm. the world, and Britain occupies 35th. It tells you mm. that the likes of Finland and Norway are better countries with, re with respect to how the media operates and the freedom of the press, uh, not gagging the press than the U.S. and Britain that seems to be in the eyes and nose or faces of everybody. But that said, this is going to be an election that will actually make the world move in perhaps a direction that was set for it as a new order. Um, when I say the old order, the old order for U.S. foreign policy deals with multilateralism. Uh, you find alliances like the NATO. Uh, you find the U.S. be the ones that align okay. more with uh, the European Union and the rest of it all. But Trump has said, before you talk about others, you talk about yourself. America so, first. So America first. I, I don't know why many people are very uncomfortable with that. Uh, because I believe that for you to lead others, your charity should begin at home. Awesome. Let, 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 let me hold it there. You okay. know, that's always the temptation. When I didn't pick the mic, yeah. <laughs> the, the gist continues. So, so I understand we have King Joe back on the line. Okay, King Joe, uh, uh, let it be known to the whole world that you're a Trumpist. So I'm not going to speak to you as an analyst now, but a Trumpist. But um, can you explain to us what exactly is the fears of the president? Because a lot of, maybe Democrats, some analysts believe that some of the statements are actually unprecedented, saying that somebody is going to steal the vote, that we had to get Twitter to, you know, to flag what he said. Uh, he had to come up with... Um, you know, subtle kicking against uh, the mailing votes. Uh, can you tell us what the real issues are? Oh, so, so, so unfortunate there. I'm sure that our engineers are working around the clock to get it fixed. Whether it's from you, I don't want to believe it's from you, and uh, whether, whatever it is, I would like to bring you into the conversation. Now, that seems to be the conversation out there, but I don't know where the interest lies. Those people who believe that the president seems to be, be very unpresidential. When is unpresidential now in terms of how America is touted to be? For the president to say, this is my pre-election victory speech. Well, there's something I'd like to say here, and I think that for many people, I do not think that they've been very fair. Um, without divinalized Trump. I have to say by beginning that Trump has his flaws. I don't forget a man that has operated um, private businesses for many years. He perhaps doesn't understand what political communication is. He has not dealt with the majority of American public. He has been a private businessman and you know uh, an estate mogul, as it were, and one who has built wealth and controlled people. So suddenly coming within the political circles is a new circle for him. And perhaps, um, don't also forget that, um, I have to say here very categorically, Americans worship money. So that is one thing about them. So it, uh, it got to that stage unexpectedly, unbelievably. And don't I also- I think it's okay to put it in quotes. When is Americans worship money? It can be all yeah, right. Yeah, the one thing about America is, one of the, some of the security breaches- We know it's that, a capitalist country. Yes, yeah, some of the security breaches the US has had um, is simply because many people came into the US, got US documents as citizens, but they didn't quite verify them because they had the money to actually go through that process. For instance, the likes of Osama bin Laden and many terrorists that at one time or the other had been associated with the US, they had the financial capacity to actually access American citizenship or permanent residency. But the due diligence uh, seemed to have been overlooked. Uh, if you also look at it, the like of Mike Zuckerberg and the rest, for instance, when we talk about the owner of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, the first thing he talked about when he supported the NSAS process was, donate through Bitcoin. It didn't say answers first. It said donate through Bitcoin. So it tells you that whatever it is that the capitalist America does now tends to be motivated by the financial benefits that would come to them. If you look at the drive of the likes of Big Gates and the vaccination, it always tends towards, okay, what do I stand to get monetarily afterwards? So that's a fact that can be double-checked by anybody. But that said, we'll come back to the politics of the United States of America. I think for Agda the incumbent or the challenger of the incumbent, it is not out of place to actually sound your concern leading into any election. And one of the things that I also find very ridiculous was for them to have actually prompted Trump to say he need to more or less sign that if he doesn't win the election, he would not contest it or that he would leave office. And my concern is, why will you come up with such an idea that 
if he doesn't win the election, he has to actually sign to actually agree. So for me, I think that that's some of the promptings for Trump that he didn't feel good with. How and why will you say if he doesn't win the election, he has to agree to leave office? The constitution is very clear. If you lose an election, you have to leave office. There is nothing you can do about it. So telling the president that he has to more or less sign that if at all he doesn't win an election, he would leave the office, perhaps means you have labeled him a fraud. So I think that uh, those are the things that Trump himself has seen that made him at first feel, I don't think um, is very fair. Don't forget that the Democrats spent, I think, up to about $48 million or so trying to fact check certain things on Trump, talked about the election collusion with Russia, and all those things were flawed. I am not talking like a Trump supporter. I'm bringing the facts to bear. Don't also forget that they talked about Biden. Biden is a challenger. It has been, for over four decades, a lawmaker. We have his, ante his antecedents there to fact check. We have his records. So what are the concerns people are raising? So for these elections, I think it's very important to also understand that they talked about the coronavirus and how Trump has actually allowed many Americans to die. It's going to about a quarter of a million. Okay. But if we have to consider the fact that... Adeni, well, you know, my, my concern is um, uh, probably no thanks to the fact that I should have brought you before this election. Probably your analysis will even guide the voters, okay. uh, so to say. But I, I'm, I'm looking at uh, especially those who are voting in diaspora, who yes, are back me. here, okay. and they can vote. But I, I'm looking at um, the immediate one, you know, coming out. I, I saw a bit of... Politicking. I, I, when I listened to um, uh, Joe Biden, I also stayed awake all through the night, and Joe Biden said, oh, he was going to give speech, and then the, the, we still have the electoral vote in the realm of 130-something to uh, back thereabout then, yeah. back then. And he came up and spoke. And what did he say? He said, oh, we are on track to becoming the winner that oh, he has gotten the feedback from Arizona, he has gotten the feedback from many states that were yet to trickle in then. And I said, we're on track. I, I'm not taking side, but I think that's not out of place for what their constitution allows. Yeah. But for you to say that you hinted that you were going to go to the Supreme Court, which he has the right to, but coming to say that we have won, this is pre-election uh, uh, speech. Uh, I, I don't know whether we have King Joe in the conversation now. Do we have King Joe on the line now? Do we have King Joe on the line? We don't want it to be a, a two-way thing. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm sure you've been part of this conversation. So Yeah, I, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. I'm so sorry. My network is a bit funny. But um, I think I just want to say right away, hopefully it doesn't mess up again, but I just want to say that I love your guest. And he has done a I don't good love job him for you. Because he's sounding <laughs> like he supports Trump. I love him because he simply speaks the truth. You know, um, the problem is that most of the most people don't like speaking the truth. What he was telling you is the absolute truth. And I mm. wish you had him on before the elections. People would have actually known the truth about what is going on in America. The, the truth of the matter is that in America today, it's a battle between the some special interest and, you know, an underdog. Donald Trump is actually like an underdog. He said people need attention. Hey, you need to ask that if you lose, that you are going to concede defeat. Now, why would some, once somebody do something like that, you should be immediately suspicious. And these are the same people that it is on record. Anybody can go check it. It's online there. It's not been deleted from YouTube. Hillary Clinton actually told Joe Biden that under no circumstance should he concede defeat to Donald Trump. Clinton said that flat out. It's there online. Anybody can check it. And not only that, there's something they call war games when they have to reenact a possible scenario that could happen during elections. So they had a Democrat-controlled war game. In that war game, they actually came to a conclusion that Donald Trump predictably is going to win by electoral college votes, and then Biden is going to have the popular vote. And so in that same war game, they said, even when this happens in November, that Biden is not meant to concede to, do, to, to, uh, uh, to Donald Trump. And the person who played the role of Biden is John Podesta. 
So you can see that Democrats already knew what they were going to do. And look at what is going on right now for people who have been watching the elections. In Pennsylvania, the district attorney in Pennsylvania, before the polls opened, before even the day of the elections, came out in the open and said that Donald Trump, that when the votes are counted in Pennsylvania, that Trump is going to lose. Now, at this time, no one has cast any vote. Nothing has happened. Now, look at what is happening. All of a sudden, Biden was leading in Pennsylvania, which is a key swing state. And before you know what is going on, Trump overtook Biden and began to lead by almost 700,000 votes. The moment they saw that momentum for Trump, they quickly stopped counting something that is unprecedented in the history of the United States of American elections. Yeah. So this is what happened. Not only that, they also found out that Trump was surging very far ahead in Georgia, and they stopped the counting. So all the places where Trump, they found out that Trump was winning, they stopped the counting. Another very interesting, bizarre thing that happened was that they quickly called Arizona for Joe Biden. Arizona is a traditional uh, Republican right. state. They called Arizona for Joe Biden when it was only 20-something percent of the votes that were in. So about 70-something to 80-something percent of the votes have not come in when they said that Joe Biden had carried Arizona. And now let me give you this information from our backdoor war room, eh? in case you don't know this. From what we are seeing, from all the things we are looking at, it actually appears that Trump is about to carry Arizona. Meanwhile, the Electoral College vote for Arizona has already gone to Biden. Most of the votes they gave to Biden are things that Trump is already flipping, and they quickly called it too early. And you're wondering, why did the media rush to call all these places for Biden when there were only 20-something, 30-something, 40-something coming in? But when Trump wins decisively, like Florida, where he won, and it was all about 91% of the votes coming, he had about 300,000 and there were only 50,000 left to come. I think Joe. they refused to call Florida for Trump. King Joe, let me quickly interject. Let me quickly interject so that uh, I, I can bring in Kunu again. Uh, thanks to Kunu who has made it so easy for you. You don't have a Democrat who is going to take you up today, but I, I will be... I'll be on, I will try to look at both of you to see what the Democrats are actually saying and put their concerns into perspective. Now, the gist out there is that uh, Trump is against the votes that are being counted from the males, that he also suspects some kind of uh, clandestine move. And we're also getting these vibes that, good, Trump is seen as an outsider, Trump is seen as an anti-establishment, but for God's sake, is he not in power? And who are those people that you are throwing some accusing fingers at? Well, these are, these are the democratic elements in power. You know, in every government, especially in the U.S. government, for people who do not know, we have two different governments in America. You have the mainstream conventional government headed by Donald Trump, and you have the what we call the shadow government. Okay, the shadow government has a very funny name. We call them the deep state. These are the people who run things from under, under the ground. So when you don't agree with them, they mess things up for you and they pull you down. They are the people who feel like they own the United States of America. They decide who becomes a president. Now, members of the deep state, 99% of these people are leaning towards a democratic party. So when Trump is crying out most of the time, people don't know who, why he's crying out. He's crying out against what those of us Trump followers call the swamp or the deep state. These are the people who have been there. They know about every president that comes to be, and uh, anybody who comes to become an American president, they have a hand in anybody becoming a president. Unfortunately, when it came to Trump, they were not able to decide Trump victory. And Americans decided to have Trump by themselves. So that's why we call him an outsider. So these are the people that Trump is worried about. They have, they have a lot of collaboration with their European counterparts. They have a lot of collaboration with people like China and the rest of them. So they are not people you can just wish away and throw away like that. And they have people planted even in Trump's administration. That's why you used to hear about all those kind of leaks coming from Trump White House. You hear people who are exposing stuff and, you know, phone call. They will bring it out and expose it and they say, Okay. I, I, I'm sure the network is also... The, the network is trying to say... Let's...
Okay, King Joe, um, we will come back to you. Let me also listen to a new friend you found. And don't be shocked by the time he gives you the other side. Now, uh, we, what we are looking at is, um, this is a man, I remember four years ago, that he was vehemently against the idea of electoral college. And whatever the system is, it has been in American constitution, yeah. and it went in his favor. Probably nobody cried foul there. Nobody said, oh, the system was, was done to work against him. So what is this move this time around? Because we hardly hear this kind of gerrymandering, all this kind of electoral malpractice that uh, the Trump scam seems to be talking about. Let's not forget that uh, for those who are followers of this whole thing, I think it was three months ago, in the same Georgia that Ogechuku mentioned, there were certain mailing votes that belonged to the Republicans that somebody didn't let go through. Uh, a lady was snapped for doing that. I have my records if I'm to check my archives. What I'm saying in essence is this, that um, the fact that Trump came in, for many people who don't understand, the 2016 election was a defining moment in the history of the U.S. Um, if you check in the past 50, 60, 70 years, let me say between the time of the Second World War and now, no American president had come into the White House without the sanction of Wall Street. Wall Street had always, you know, supported or backed. And Trump did not take a dime from Wall Street. He did his thing. And that's why it seems as if um, in the course of time, it appears as if Trump didn't find things very favorable. Don't also forget that leading up to these elections, um, especially when the Trump campaign was on, uh, we've been talking about Washington getting sanctuary cities, especially maybe the Seattle area where you have uh, the likes of Bill Gates. And Trump said, as long as he remains president, nobody's going to get such. Everybody should have access to the different states. Of course, Washington f voted in favor of the Democratic uh, uh, candidate Joe, Joe Biden. What I'm saying, in essence, is we must understand the unravelings of the time. We must also understand the positions of the Democrats and the Conservatives. Don't forget that apart from domestic policies, we're also talking about alliances across the Atlantic. So we're talking about transatlantic relationship. Then I also need to bring in this picture for many people who perhaps don't understand. The Democrats believe that there should be an all-inclusivity while I believe many people don't quite follow things through, is they've said Trump has not called Antifa and the rest of it all. He hasn't called them racist. But I have videos where in about 15 times, Trump referred to Antifa and other groups as those who are racist and those who should not be countenance that he wouldn't allow them. So at times when we speak, we should step on the brakes of our emotions a bit. I'm not, for, I'm not talking here as a Trump supporter. I'm just saying this because the records are there. If you also look at Joe Biden, the, in terms the, of- The let, viewers let me, will determine that. Yeah, yeah they will. <laughs> let, let me just rub this in. In terms of communication, and in terms of you know, being politically sensible with respect to how you talk, Joe Biden has more of that. So he understands the dynamics of political communication and how to appeal to people. And the political correctness. Political mm -hmm. correctness, even if we have found out some of those things could be untrue. For instance, you're talking about uh, the issue with Ukraine. I have video where Joe Biden has actually said something that shows that he mooted support for what his son did and the money his son collected in Ukraine. Some of the people that are agitating at times don't have this fact for that. I can say that with every sense of humility, I have it in my archive as well. So I'm saying in essence that coming up to this election, you'd find out that there are lots of things that uh, have given reasons so why Trump at this moment doesn't feel secure with the kind of practices going on around him. And that is why he continues to say vehemently that certain things are fraudulent. Look at what King Okejugu talked about. When it was found out that it was in the lead, they called in the votes in two different places. And I think that that is not the best we should do when we talk about free and fair elections. Anybody that wants to occupy the White House, obviously you need to get 270 of the 538 electors vote from the Electoral College. But what we should see leading up to that has to do with what doesn't favor one candidate or the other. So I think that for the image of the American people, for the image of America's democracy, 
uh, some of these things should be looked into. And don't forget that, apart from what Okechuku said, some of these things could actually be traced and facts could be found. So maybe that's the reason Trump is saying, well, I got the feelers that certain things didn't go well and I'm going to prevent it. Because okay. So, so, so that's, that's okay. my point. Okay. Uh, let me quickly get uh, Okechuku here to uh, look at uh, the focus uh, because this is deeply beyond uh, the result and what will happen. But let's come back to the results. From the look of things, listening to your analysis, do you think Trump has lost this battle? No. Explain. Emphatic no. Are you he being is, uh, okay? He's going to win. He's going to win the election. And the reason I believe he's going to win is because what I said to you earlier, um, Arizona is in play. And if care is not taken, it's going to carry Arizona. Uh, the Trump campaign has now also decided they're going to go for a recount in Wisconsin. And not only that, Georgia is looking good for him. They are going to call it for him very soon if they haven't called it already. He actually is almost, uh, with Arizona coming to him, he's already way past the 270 that he needs for the, for the, uh, the win that he's looking for, okay? Because when he gets all the votes that they have caught, they have already seen him doing well with now, and it's going to be 264. And with Arizona, he is already past 270. So he's going to get it. And whichever way this goes, you can be sure that Trump is going to head to the Supreme Court. But the thing is that if, I mean, I just see a Supreme Court thing here. It's either Trump is going to Supreme Court or they are going to Supreme Court. And this now brings us to why Donald Trump was feverishly fighting to make sure that Amy Coney Barrett was confirmed to the Supreme Court because now it's almost like the conservatives have now an edge over the liberals. And you saw that the liberals, the Democrats, fought so hard to stop that confirmation from happening because as many of us in the Trump camp actually anticipated, we believe that they knew they were going to do all the things happening today because there are a lot of fraudulent counting of ballots that's happening. Imagine like what I said earlier in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania where they had to abruptly stop counting the, the, the votes, something that has never happened, and then say they are going to continue the next day. And then by the next day, all of a sudden, 100,000 or 136,000 votes showed up from nowhere. And they said all the 136,000 million ballots, uh, that all of them went to, went to Joe Biden. So 136,000 million ballots, none of them was for Donald Trump, even when it is so obvious. So everybody say this is, a, this is stat a statistical impossibility. There's no way you okay, can have 136,000 mail ballots and all of them will just go to Joe Biden. So there are a lot of things, potential elect electoral irregularities that is showing up, which is why Trump announced earlier that he's going to go to the Supreme Court. So I believe he is actually winning, but I believe that the other people might decide to go to court as well. And this is probably why you have started seeing rioters and protesters already showing up in Washington, D.C. That happens when you see that liberals are losing. You see that they're going to start rioting. So that has already started happening yesterday. And we've seen some talking points from their okay. camp, knowing that they are not really comfortable with okay, what King is happening. Joe, so I believe Trump is going to win. I wish time would permit me to understand the logic you and Trump are looking at. You're going to Supreme Court, but if you win, the Democrat will go to the Supreme Court. What you're saying is somebody will go to the Supreme Court. Because some would say, in our uh, local politics here, that when you start crying foul like that, probably you've seen where it's coming ahead. But if you're very optimistic, if you're 100% sure, trust me, your words are on marble. I will come back to ask you some questions later, if anything else happens. But if you win, we'll also bring you to talk about that. But let's just clean this up before we round off. What is the likelihood that um, this result is not going to be unnecessarily extended beyond normal time? Well, I hope that um, they will not allow uh, Trump words uh, to be confirmed in that there are reasons for the unnecessary delay. Don't forget that his concern was actually about the delay. I have not seen anywhere, even in Nigeria's democracy, where you're counting votes and suddenly you say you will stop and continue the next day. I am worried because if, for instance, we have our elections here, there is no way, no matter how difficult it is, those that are counting the votes must continue through the night 
until they finish. So it, it's something that actually gives us concern that they were counting uh, the, 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 what, what has been actually thumb printed or whatever, and suddenly they said they will stop and continue the next day. Anything could have happened from anywhere. So as far as I'm concerned, I think that we should not just throw away. You might not like Trump. You might not like Joe Biden. But I do not think uh, it makes any sense that you were counting and you suddenly stop and say you continue when it's still time for you to go on. I, I think that um, I'm not... Okay. Yeah, so, so I think that that's just the line. But all in all, I think that um, whatever it is that the American people decide um, should actually be what any of the leading candidates or any of the candidates should take. And of course, um, it's going to teach us a lot of lessons regarding what an incumbent feels if at all Trump doesn't win or what an incumbent really believes he could do if Trump eventually wins. But for Joe Biden, well, we'll actually look at how acceptable he has become uh, in the eyes of the American people. Uh, but don't also forget that one of the things that Trump is standing against is globalization. And um, a lot of people are also saying that you cannot shove your ideals down the throat of every other country. Okay. But some people that are patriots or some people that are looking inwards. For instance, let's look at coronavirus. They predicted doom for Africa. But they fail to understand that our eating habits and lifestyle differ. For instance, somebody go three days and not take a bath in the U.S. Here you must take a bath because of tropical region where exactly. you find yourself. So I'm saying that they should understand that it's not one size fits all. We talk to, if you talk about patriotism, if you talk about your country, let's also look at okay. it. How much of charity you do at home actually matters before you take it outside. Thank you so much, Adeni Ikuno. And once again, King Joe, thank you. I'll look forward to talking to you very soon when the results will be out to get your take. I know your conversation continues on the social media. We'll keep track with you to see what you're churning out there. Thank you so much, King Joe. So I don't need to thank you thank because we still have you here for the second segment. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, we'll be looking at some of the revelations coming out from the uh, um, the panel of inquiry here in Lagos over the Lekki shootings. Please don't go away.